Good evening and welcome to Access Iowa City, a program about the disability and independent living movements in Southeast Iowa. Access Iowa City is brought to you by a generous contribution from the Noon Pilots Club of Johnson County in a collaboration with the Extended Dream Foundation, Access to Independence, and the Center for Disabilities and Development, as well as all the hardworking folks here at Public Access Television Channel 18. I'm Terry Cunningham, President of the Board of Directors of Access to Independence, Vice Chair of the Johnson County Mental Health Disability Services Planning Council, and an individual who's lived with a significant disability for the last 41 plus years. Tonight we're glad to have with us representatives of the Heritage Area Ag Agency on Aging and the Johnson County Task Force on Aging. Kelly Capros from Heritage and Bob Welch who is the chair of the Johnson County Task Force on Aging. We want to welcome you both here. It's good to be here. As well as back from his illness last week, our friend Keith Ruff. Thank you. Kelly, you want to kind of give an overview of Heritage and all the little things they're involved in? Sure, and sure. And then in the second hour, we'll... Sounds wonderful. Well, Heritage is an area agency on aging that serves seven counties, um, and Johnson County is one of the seven counties that we serve. Um, our mission is to plan, fund, and advocate for older adults, uh, family caregivers, people with disabilities in our region, and um, to work to support programs and services in the area. Um, one of the um, things that Heritage does and has within it is it what's called an ADRC, an Aging and Disability Resource Center. And um, that is a place for older adults and people with disabilities to get information on services and if they'd like to um, talk with an options counselor on what type of long-term um, solutions are out there for them and to help them with access solutions. Um, one of the big things that we do is related to advocacy and Bob will talk more about that I'm sure in some of the things that we do um, and we are um, funding through grants and programs but specifically related to the Older Americans Act. Terry, the Older Americans Act uh, established what's called Area Agencies on Aging. And uh, when that first came into being, Bob Ray was the governor of the state, and uh, Governor Ray made the decision that uh, the way to divide up the state of Iowa was in accord with the community colleges. Uh, interestingly enough, fast forward to Today, the only one of the area agencies in Iowa that is still defined by a uh, community college geographic area is the Heritage Area Agency on Aging. And that has uh, had a very unique relationship with uh, Kirkwood, uh, which has really been a, uh, I guess you'd say a blessing uh, to the Heritage Area Agency because, uh, you know, Heritage uh, has the advantage of being located on facilities that uh, Kirkwood provides at this point. Mm -hmm. And so there's some real advantages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking of that, Area Agencies on Aging have undergone some kind of significant changes over the, the last year. and. We're There's still been going lots of, through lots that. Of yes. Consolidation. You want to talk about that a little? The um, this legislation was passed to reduce the number of area agencies on aging in the state. Currently, there are 13 area agencies on aging, and the legislation um, now states to reduce to six area agencies on aging. Um, and so. Um, the state is has currently issued, or they have issued, what an RFA request for application, um, which organizations are in the process of completing to um, 
either be designated as the Area Agency on Aging in their new restructured um, PSAs or public service areas, as Bob mentioned, that have been set up. Um, but uh, so Heritage is going through that process right now, completing the application. There's lots of us in the office that are very busy completing that. It's quite a process, but um, you know, ultimately the goal um, is to hopefully bring more equitable access to services statewide, um, so that. Um, what someone can expect as far as services and supports in, say, Dubuque County would be the same as what they could expect in Johnson County. That's the mm -hmm. ultimate goal. Um, so that process is going. Um, the RFA has been released and is actually due to the state um, in mid-October. And then the Aging Commission is meeting in mid-November to um, make the designations of where, who will be the area agency on aging. Those changes don't come into effect though until July 1 of 2013. Um, and there's been, um, again, six areas, and I have, can send you the map if you'd like, but you can view that on the Iowa Department on Aging's website and, and see what um, the proposed map, or what the maps will look like. Can we can you yes, tell us how much more difficult that's going to be to cover the geographic area with that cutback? Well, I am sure, just like with everything, there's opportunities and there's challenges. But um, in our current region, as we are now, the seven counties, um, the way they re they did the map for effective July 1, 2013, our area has remained unchanged. So, um, you know, again, there are no guarantees that Heritage would be redesignated as the Area Agency on Aging in the state, but um, we certainly are going to fill out a competitive application and, and um, hope that um, we receive that designation. Two of the present Area Agencies on Aging retain their same geographic area. Mm -hmm. uh, originally, the Commission on Aging approved five area agencies, and the whole western part of the state was one area agency. Uh, some legislators had trouble with that, and so the last uh, General Assembly uh, basically said to the Commission on Aging, hey, look at that and reconsider your action. And they did, and they then divided that large western area into two. Uh, the present directors of the area agencies have worked together to say, hey, let's partner together in this way in that way. Uh, I think it is safe to say that the uh, two of the strongest area agencies are the Heritage and the one in uh, Aging Resources, which is around Polk County. Mm -hmm. At one point they were talking about having the, the regions correspond to DHS district offices. Is that still the case? I believe there were a number of maps that were issued and presented. Some maybe had to do with the mental health redesign too, but they didn't go in that direction. Bob, you may um, know more about to that. Terry, the first, when the Department on Aging was faced with the task of uh, reorganizing uh, because of a mandate from the state legislature, mm -hmm. uh, the staff drew up some maps based on the demographics that now exist in the state and what was projected. Uh, none of the area directors liked that because it basically ended up that no area agency would have the same uh, geographic structure that it had before. Uh, and uh, so when there was a lot of, uh, I, 
gets flack from the area directors. Uh, Donna Harvey, who's the director of the Department on Aging, said, well, why don't you come up with a better plan? And so they worked and sort of agreed, hey, why don't you and I get together and form this region uh, and all? And so that's how it's played out. Uh, I think they have been conscious of uh, the difference in populations. Mm -hmm. uh, I should have brought along uh, all that material. Uh, Kelly mentioned about the uh, request for application mm -hmm. that those, you know, th the state now has defined the areas. So those six areas are set. Mm -hmm. Now the state has to go through the process of deciding who should be designated as the area agency. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know whether or not there's anyone else that would be uh, applying to be the area agency in this seven county area or not. Uh, but there's nothing that prevents uh, any organization. You know, Terry, you and Keith, if you wanted to, could put together a proposal and fill that out and, Ooh. and say, <laughs> hey, this is what our plan is and this is how we're going to deliver these services. Uh, it's so a, it doesn't have to be an existing agency? It does not have agency. to be an existing. Mm -hmm. No, okay. it's, it's, it's open. Mm -hmm. And the other very interesting thing to me, uh, Terry and Keith, yeah. is the fact that uh, in the regulations, if you wanted to fill out an application, you could not talk to anybody in the Department on Aging. Uh, to do that would automatically disqualify you. So if someone from the Heritage Area Agency <laughs> has a question in relation to how to fill out attachment A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, they have to ask a designated person at the state, and that's as a part Department of Administrative Services. As a part of Administrative Services. So they, you know, you shake your head. I, that's, you know, it's <laughs> no, and it just it never fails to amaze me how many stumbling blocks get put in the way. Yeah. That just sounds to me like a polite way to tell somebody who's not already in existence, we really don't want to mess with you. Uh, yeah. uh, do we have a breakdown of where most of the aging people live? Are they living in the rural areas or the urban areas? Well, in the heritage region, we s serve the population as about 78,000 older adults. Okay. Um, and I do not have the bi-county breakdown, but of our region, the highest populations of older adults are in Lynn and Johnson counties. Bob may know those figures on the top of his head, but. No, Keith, but what, what mm -hmm. you point out is a very valid one because in terms of percentage of population, okay. your rural counties have a much higher population of seniors mm -hmm. than do you, you quote urban areas. Uh, the, you know, the urban area being, in our case, uh, Johnson County and Lynn County. Uh, but as Kelly points out, there are more seniors in those two counties, but there's also more population. Uh. But the percentage of seniors are less in those counties than in your five rural counties. And the challenge can be in rural counties for many older adults that are, you know, maintaining independence through home and community-based services. Many of those more rural areas, the more rural you are, the more uh, limited you are as far as access to services or mm -hmm. service providers. And so that can be challenging. And, and this is not just, quote, for elderly. This mm -hmm. is true of the disabled Absolutely. population. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And you have 
in your rural areas, you have uh, fewer people, and so you have less of a mass to serve, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that interferes then with your basic in infrastructure in terms of agencies mm -hmm. that will provide that service. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really a very catch-22 at that point. Mm -hmm. um, I, at one time, this was not accepted, but at one time I took the map of Iowa and a compass and mapped out where there should be centers so that everybody in the state of Iowa, elderly, disabled, all, would be within 30 miles of services. Mm -hmm. uh, because you might remember that the way we got our 99 counties was we wanted to have a county where people could live and on horseback get yes. to the county seat Good. and home in, one day. in a day. And you tell uh, that to people and they're, oh no, it couldn't have been that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's how, that's that's how we got 99 counties. They, uh, my daughter, stepdaughter, lives in uh, the Dallas area in Irving, Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were down there recently. And what amazed me is in that area, around Dallas, Fort Worth, Irving area, they have twice the population of the entire state of Iowa. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but your point, Keith, about where do the uh, seniors live? Uh, yeah, they live in both the rural and the uh, urban areas of mm -hmm. uh, of the state, and, uh, and and you know it's unfortunate, but it is true for the disability community as well yeah. as the elderly community. Mm -hmm that the best services are actually in your urban areas. Mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, some of the services that, that you talk about would be like congregate meal sites, mm -hmm. accessible, safe housing, because you know, as, as folks age, they don't need mm -hmm. the humongous houses they might have you know, grown up with. And so many of those are, have, you know, a second floor or a basement and you know some of those lovely basements have the, the most god-awful steps going down them or they should. I know my grandparents house had kind of a winding staircase getting up and these little teeny steps or you know as far as folks who need assistance mm -hmm. you know little communities don't have home health care centers mm -hmm. Typically, they don't have their own doctor. They don't have a psychiatrist. They don't have transportation. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there's little opportunity for employment. You know, so there, that's a significant chunk of, of needed services mm -hmm. that you know, Iowa as a whole, and I would imagine it's, it's kind of the same all over the country that you know, if you're not near the large city where people who provide those services yep. can have mm -hmm. a very large pool to pick from, you don't have them. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and people with disabilities are the facing the same problem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the reasons why we are living that much longer. Mm -hmm. So better health care mm -hmm. is making us live longer. Mm -hmm. So we're not only going to have the problem of aging, we're going to have the problem of aging with a disability. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But what? it's not only, Keith, people like you with a disability that's living longer. It's people like myself that's living longer. The yeah. the fastest growing 
population, segment of the population in Iowa are those of us who are 85 or older. That population in Iowa is growing much faster than, you know, the age groups that you're in. It's amazing. And unfortunately, not being replaced with an equal amount of yeah, young uh, and, and, and one kids. of the things that really helps to magnify the problem is that the rates that home and community-based service providers are paid is not productive. I mean, you can't actually set up a business that will make money providing that. In many rural parts in Iowa, the major employer is the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And yet the nursing homes haven't yet, although we finally got a law passed about three years ago, I think it is now, whereby a nursing home could provide other services within their facility. The rates are so low that most nursing homes don't provide that additional yeah. service. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, so in many areas of Iowa, there's just not services yeah. that people need to be able to stay in their homes. Funding uh, is certainly a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me understand a little the whole redesign. We're going from 13 regions to six. If, if, if multiple regions are then joining together to form a region, it, do you know how that whole organizational chart is, is gonna flesh out or has that not been well, talked the, about enough? Yeah. You know, is there gonna, if three regions go together, does that mean that they're gonna have one person as the director over oh. that and then several satellite centers or? Unfortunately, I think that's the way it's gonna work. And all to be worked out as part of yeah. the proposal and, and. Like for example, I'm told in one region, there are two of the present areas joining together. One is near retirement director. Mm -hmm. So I'm told that that person will become the director of the new combined area. The other one will be the associate. And in a couple years when that person retires, then that person will become the director. Uh, Hopefully they'll, they'll be able to do those amicably, but yeah. But that's you know, difficult when you go to, to that do. structure, I think one of the hidden agendas of the legislature was probably, will we save money? And I think the answer is, no, you're really not going to save. I don't know how you could save money. Uh, because you're going to keep basically the same people and you, you're going to change some names of the organizations. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and see, one of the things that complicates it is all the others except Heritage are separate corporations. Mm -hmm. And so his Corporation A and Corporation B Corporation C, they own property, they are a legal entity, and now they have to go through and form a new legal entity. And the state of Iowa legislature, in its wisdom, mandated this, but did not provide any money yeah. for that. Uh, I'm a part of the older Iowa's legislature, and one of the bills we're going to be discussing next week is saying to the legislature, hey, at least come up with $500,000 of one-time money yeah. for legal 
and printing expenses because even heritage mm -hmm. is going to have legal expenses sure. that it has not incurred because of its unique structure and complying with the request for application. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, this, if the state of Iowa does not provide funding to cover those expenses, where does the money come from? It comes uh, from yep. money that would otherwise provide services. Mm -hmm. I have heard um, yesterday, I was on a webinar, and, and I've heard um, representatives from the Iowa Department on Aging say that we aren't supposed to, well, we shouldn't think of it as cost savings, cost efficiencies they're hoping will come out of it, but any money that is saved will be turned into services. The point being that if you have three area agencies on aging merging together, for example, you wouldn't need three HR people, you would maybe only need one, but then the other, they need other staff to cover other things. And that always sounds good on paper, but, and I mean, I, I'm sure they can make it work, but you know, as, as you widen an area for that, that makes you know, people traveling to a certain location mm -hmm. more difficult, it, although most applications and that are done online now, you know, it, it, it makes it, it turns it into a very impersonal mm -hmm. situation where, you know, you, you may never go to the main office, you may never see the folks at those locations. Um, Your concerns. Mm -hmm. Considering local of common community care. Why does the nursing home industry have such great influence in Iowa? That's why, because they're the biggest employers well, they in have small the largest, areas. Obviously, uh, the uh, you know one of the associations have a uh, staff of five people who are at the uh, Capitol when the legislature's in session day in and day out. And if they're not at the state Capitol, they're in Washington, D.C., visiting at that point. And I have been told, I don't know this as a fact, Keith, but that one of the largest nursing home lobbyists have, in addition to their staff, people that they can call on to who represent them as lobbyists so that they can make sure that regardless of the number of committees that may be meeting at the same time, they will have somebody there at sure. every meeting. Well, and, uh, we've hit the end of our time for, okay. for this segment. It's been we, want, we want to thank both you, Kelly and Bob, Join us next week when we'll have part two. Until then, thank you and goodbye. Have thank you. A good week, everyone.